This is Business I Am. My name is Simba Elijah Charles here again. Now, let's get into our economic review. And this morning, you can get involved. 2146, that's your SMS line. And at Metropole TVKE across all your social media platforms. Meet me at Charles and at in, the, in the studio, we are joined by Abraham Madogom, the CEO, Mirati Capital. Good. Now, this year's tax collection targets from a company and employee earnings have been raised by 36.1 billion with the announcement that the COVID-19 tax relief will end in January 2021. Now, latest revenue performance outlook report by the Treasury indicates that income tax receipts are to hit 735 billion, which is a slight jump from the 699.5 billion in September. Presently, companies are paying a maximum tax at the rate of 25% of their earnings instead of 30% as part of the measures passed by the lawmakers late April to cushion businesses and families from the economic shocks of the pandemic. Employees' earnings up from 24,000 are also spared payroll tax deductions. Personal relief for all workers got a raise to 2,400 from the initial 1,400, while turnover tax for small traders was lowered to 1% from 3%. Value added tax, that's VAT, rate on purchase of goods and services was already adjusted since April to 14% from the standard 16%. Let's have a look at that uh, contribution of income uh, tax to um, the, the, the tax revenue in the country, which is, that's why you drop those graphics for us. Good. Now, if you look at that, then you can actually say that when it comes to percentage contribution to total revenue, right, of income tax that is seen on a steady rise from 2014 all the way to financial year. 2018-2019 fine, which now is going to put 2020 into a proper focus. Now, let's look at that as well in terms of percentage contribution. You could also say that we'll be talking about 2014, 2015, 2016 as well being amongst the years because we're talking about around a percentage of 20% averagely. That's how much income tax uh, contributes to the total revenue in the country. So the question this morning is this. Now the COVID-19 pandemic has already wiped 1.7 million jobs off the Kenyan economy. Is the Treasury being with the latest target? And Abraham, that's the question that anybody is going to put across to you. Yeah, I, I think I'm, a sim of, I'm of the same opinion. I'm, yes. I'm actually wondering why we, are, we, want to, we, we want to put those measures away. Because we are still in the middle of this. In fact, probably we are, we are still in the thick of it. Yes. So I think, I think fine, it is, it is in their purview to, to take it away or to give it to us. That one, we, we have to give it to them. But as to whether the, the, they'll achieve that number, I don't think so. Yes. In fact, if I were them, what I would have done then, I would have retained my, my, my projections the same way where, where they were and use that now as my cushion. Yes. But now increasing it, knowing very well that the pot from which you're taking is income tax. Income tax is the tax coming from people who are employed. And you know what has happened. We've lost over a million jobs. So personally, I don't think they're going to achieve that. And personally, I think it is premature to take away any benefit that was given because of COVID. Yes. Remember, we are still dealing with the pathology, pathogenic side of, of this disease. We've not even cured it. We've not even sorted it out. You can see even our numbers now. Our, our, our prevalence rate is going up. The other day we hit 15. We are, we, we are now playing between 10 and, 4, 10 and 15 percent. So if that is not sorted out, that means the economic, the economic part of it is nowhere near being sorted out. And part of stimulation of an economy is to leave as much money in people's pocket. Either you put it there or you leave it there. One way of putting of, of, of having more money in the pocket is by leaving it there. How do you leave it there? By, by lowering taxes. These taxes were already lowered. So when you increase them, that means again we are pulling money out. So we are going around in circles. So we have to be deliberate and consistent in our policies because the fiscal policies and the monetary policies must pull in the same, same direction. Because now if you start doing this, the, the gains that you the little money that you have left in people's pocket, that 5% differential, is substantial. It is substantial because when, when you have no money or your little money, any coin goes a long way. Yes. So if we really want to spur our economy, if you really want people to start spending money, then we have to, to, to be willing to sacrifice our taxes for the next two, three years. Yes. So that people spend that money and grow the economy. But if we pull it out, and spend it whatever way because because if, anyway even if you pull it out, it, we, we basically are going to, to spend it mostly on a government wage bill, 
and paying our, our loans. Those are the two things that are that are actually gobbling our money. So it is that body, money is better spent left in people's pocket, so that they spur the economy, they, they, they grow their demand, and then we have a bigger economy. So to me, they have, they, it is in their discretion. Kare can do as they will because the law allows it. But as to whether it's the right thing to do, I don't think so. Now, let's look at where the projection is coming from. Yeah. I mean, they, they do know, even as we talk about 1.7 million jobs, they, we would like to think that they have these numbers, therefore. Would you, would you say that, well, the proper effects will continue to hurt these companies that, to the point that even as we talk about, well, a perceived turnaround, that you might find that once we come to January 2021, you still have some companies that are losing out because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Is that where we're basing our thinking from, that it's now yeah. that we're trying to understand the effect? Because basically what this is trying to say is that yes. in January there will be no COVID. There will be no COVID. Or, there'll be no, or the effects for which you are being cushioned yes. will longer be there. That's yes. not true. And there will be a turnaround. Yeah. In, in, in the fact, economy, it, yes. they, they could be worse. They could be the same. They could be better. But the, the issue is there will be a, a COVID effect the whole of 2021, not even 2020, 2021, especially the economic effects of it. Yes. You can see around the world we're already having a second wave. So we don't know how long we'll be in these woods. So I think for now, let's let let let's just go rest. Look at the, the, the monetary policy side. The MPC has met five consecutive times and left the rate at 7%. Why? Because right now, sometimes I think it's better just to leave status, just leave status quo. Yes. Yeah, just just let sleeping dogs lie, because right now it's it's working. The, those the, the, the few the, the reduction in VAT, the reduction in TOT, the reduction in income tax rates has a, has a positive effect of leaving some more money in in individual pockets, in business pockets. Now the the MPC has remained constant, so at least the cost of credit. Has not, at least has not gone up. Yes. It, it's probably remained where it is. We are now dealing with the issues of access, which probably will be cured through once we properly operationalize the, um, the, the, the guarantee scheme. Once that the credit guarantee scheme is properly done, then we probably we can start including more SMEs within the credit, within the credit space. But going in this direction really actually starts, will be rocking the boat. Okay. But, and I don't know what premise they were on, but for me, the premise it looks like that now we gave you this because there was a pandemic, now the pandemic is not there. Because for, for you, to, if you give it because of pandemic, you can only remove it if there's no pandemic. Yes. That is that, if, if you think about it logically. Yes. So unless there's something else I don't know, yes. I, I think that move is, is, is ill advised. Which therefore makes us sort of, um, sort of start thinking about what this is. Are they bowing to pressure? from international bodies that are telling them, uh-uh, you got to revert that. Yes. Because IMF yes. have been yes. totally strong yes. Yes. On, on telling them revert those things. You see, IMF has said that. Yes. But I, I said it here. IMF, I have nothing against IMF. But also IMF has a limitation of knowledge. Because IMF look at the whole world. They cannot be as detailed as, as they would want to be. Yes. The, the circumstances of Kenya, how COVID impacts Kenya, is very unique to us. They, they could the same claim, way... Yes. COVID is impacting Ecuador. Abraham, they could claim that they haven't been off so badly off when they're, when they're trying to sort of tell us exactly what economic outlook has been in the previous years. No, no. Those, those are just pure numbers. Yes. We're talking about the reality. Okay. The reality of the effect of COVID. They, they cannot be accurate. This thing is so unique that to imagine that you can sit off-site and understand what is going on here yes. is, 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 is a bit off. But then again, as, as I say, if you pay the, if you pay the piper, you, you pick the tune. So maybe it's because they've given us money, they want to push certain agenda. Yes. But for me, I believe, and, I, and, and this is my position, that w w the reason to which those tax breaks were given are still valid. Yes. So let's keep them. Pretty much. So I just want us to look at that graph again for the contribution of um, income tax to the total revenue again. If you could show me the other one that shows that, uh, that it shows that we're increasing. If you go back to 2014, um, all the way to where up to where we are right now, 2018, 2019, it will show you um, just a very interesting graph that we have been on an upper trajectory. Abraham, what we read into those numbers, are we saying that, well, from 2014 to, 20, to 2019 now, that the economy has been performing that good or the income tax has been quite high? But, I prefer to look at percentages. Yes. Percentages were between 20 and 22. Yes. So basically means it's been static. So the contribution of income tax to the, to the general has been the same. Yes. So the, the, the general increase on the quantum 
is a factor of that also the, the total is increasing. Yes. So th that trajectory upwards is overstated if you look at the quantum as opposed to the rate. The yes. rate is only runs between 20 and, 20, uh, and, and 22. So it's, 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 a, it's a 10% plus or minus. But what it speaks to, if, if we should look at the rate of, let's say, VAT. How is VAT doing? And if you look at VAT now, VAT has started to go downwards. So this is, because you know income tax, first of all, is, is purely a, a tax for, for income. So yes. it, it's a dipstick of how well are we doing in the, in the formal sector. But VAT, if VAT is going down, and VAT affects everybody. Because we all pay VAT, and no VAT can never run away from it. You walk in the market, you take a coffee, whatever, you're paying for it. So for me, it's the, the, the contribution of income tax has be, is 20%. So we still have another 80% of some of the others. So I, I, I don't know why the others have not been taxed, because I didn't hear them talk about TOT. I didn't hear them talk about VAT. They, they, they chose to speak about this one. They, they have their thinking, and, and I'll respect that. But from where I sit, I think we should not touch any of those breaks that we've given so far. Let's retain them so that we let the economy grow. When it grows, then we can harvest. Yes. But if we do it, they want to do it. Probably we may not get the effect because you, you, you may start, you may increase the rate. Employ, employers may, may not be able, be able to afford it. The employees will be able to afford. They start, they start letting them go. And, and lastly and most dangerously is we don't know how the outlook how, how the outlook of the second wave will look like. We don't know the actual effects of the, the pandemic out. If, don't forget, some of the economic effects will be, will be external. It will have nothing to do with us. Based on our source, like for, for example, where we, we, where we export our stuff, to, especially our agricultural produce. If they do badly, we will do badly by, because they, 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 will, they, they will not buy the quantities they used to buy. Yes. So then we'll have, we, we'll have, our market will be affected. So those are some of the things we need to think about and preempt those. By, by looking at even the, the, the tax regime as it is now, what further breaks can we give to spar? Because at the end of the day, Kerry can do a volume business. They can decide, you know what, we will, we will lower our rate, but we will increase the... Food. So we can still achieve the same quantum-wise. You see? Because if we go for... You know, whenever you look at quantum, quantum sometimes should, should, should inform... Whenever, if you have a target of, let's say, the, 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 the 700 or 800 million, there are many ways of getting it. You can lower the rate and increase the number of people who are paying it. I see. Or choose to go the other way of, of lowering, uh, increase the rate and then only have fewer people paying it. Personally, I would go for the other one, where, we, where, where what they are doing. They have lowered their rate and try and, and bring people on board. And be cognizant that, that our external factors that will come home to roost, especially with what is go this second wave that is going, we don't know how that will affect Europe, how, how that will affect the Americas, how it will, will affect Asia, and how it will eventually affect us. So all those factors put together inform, and from, from where I see it, that I think status quo is best. Pretty much. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the next issue that we have for you this morning. Now, data from the company's registry now shows that the number of business names registered between July and September jumped 95% to 29,941 compared to a similar period last year. Now, this data coming at a time coinciding to a timulous, um quarter characterized by pay cuts and mass layoffs of workers by companies forced into this zone by the effects of the coronavirus pandemic. Now, this period under review saw Kenyans register an additional 9,000 649 companies between July and September, which translated to an average of 326 companies registered daily. Fine. Now, Abraham, that is the data. And if you look at it, you could say that jump between July and September. Yes. And that's exactly what it is that we're talking about. It's a huge jump. And this is the time when everybody was saying, hold on to what you have. Do not suck something new because, well, you're not so sure how it's going to perform. Mm. What can we read into that data? From what you're saying this morning, what does it show you? I think it's, first of all, out of, out of that jump of 90%, yes. 80 or 90% of it were actually business names. They're not even companies. Yes. So most of them were just, you know, I know register a business name is very simple. I think it's, a two, two, it's very cheap and it's a, it's a two, three day process. Yes. So what it tells you is that people lost jobs and you're at home, and then you are like, you know what, the only option I have is to do business. Because you have to feed your family. But then when you go out there, most, the, most, most businesses will tell you, give us a name. Give us a business name. Give us a company. 
So then that's when you wake up to that. And also even from, from a tax perspective, it is always cheap, uh, it, it's always uh, prudent to have a company as opposed to a person because tax on a person is based on income. Yes. Tax on a company is based on profit. So it's see, so you see, so the tax after you've taken out all your expenses. But in personal, they don't ask you what your what your rent is. They they take they, whatever whatever metropole pays you, they take it out at thirty percent and then leave you with the rest. So, yes. so it also makes from a tax perspective it makes more sense. But given the the, the kind of people uh, people want to trade mostly with corporates and with government, those two will require you to have some formal legal, a, a legal entity, be it a business name with a sole proprietorship. Or, or a company limited. The beauty now with the, with the New Companies Act, the Companies Act allows you to have a company where you do, with one director. So, so you can actually register a company with one director under the New Act. So this is simply a function of the reality. The reality is that people who are formally employed, people who had no interest in having any other legal form other than their personal, were now pushed to a space where they had to do what they had to do and what the market was pushing them towards, towards that. If you want to trade with us, then come formally. Formally in terms of either you're, you're a sole proprietor or you're, or you're a company limited. Yes. So that's what has, has driven this. And also, give it to BRS, the ease of doing this has gone up dramatically because it's actually online. You can actually do it yourself. Pretty much online. Yeah, on, yes. it's completely online. Every stage of the way, the, the reservation, Registration, you know, now with the New Companies Act, there's no memorandum and article. Yes, it's, everything's standard. So, the, the New Companies Act has really simplified that process, and now the the logistics of doing it have also been eased by BRS because everything now is being everything is online. So you, you can actually sit on a desk and do it yourself. So basically, the the part where we had to go to lawyers and and beg them and follow them, that's gone. So you can actually that's what that also has informed this. So for as long as you have a, you have an e-citizen portal, a portal and an account, you can do this for yourself. Yeah. Th th does it also sh uh, show a shift now yeah. to what's, I mean, if you look at those businesses, Abraham, yeah. what, what sort of business now would sort of survive within this era of the COVID-19 pandemic? Because yes, they, they could be saying, they could be showing the ease of registering an M or a company now, but even during that period, what sort of companies do you expect that would survive the COVID-19 pandemic era? You see, first of all, when you register your company, yes. uh, right now what you're it's, it, it's a company is by default allowed to do everything, oh, sure. unless you say otherwise. That is how, what is the law. That, that is the law. So it, they are not doing anything. But this data does not tell us out of these companies that were registered how many actually traded. I see. Because it could be that the push was, I need to, I need to do something. I need to have an account. Yes. But as to the success rate, this data does not tell us. And um, I, I highly suspect that the success rate was not that high, because these are mostly people who are doing this thing for the first time. But they had to do something, so so they went in. But in terms of the businesses, the business that have been doing well, I think they are they are still the they are still the same usual culprits. The, the the food, especially people who are growing or about growers, and, and they have a model of transporting it and delivering it to to the to the table uh, to, to, to 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 your doorstep. Because right now people have changed the way they are doing their business. They want everything brought to them. Why? Because they want to stay indoors. They want to stay safe. They want to socialize as little as possible. So the, the, the client has completely changed. I don't know if you not you saw it. I think it was yesterday. Yes. Coca Cola has joined the bandwagon. They've said, "Dial a Coke." So if you die, if you call them, they can deliver it to your house. So people, are, the the business community at large is appreciating that this client has changed. The longer I want to come to us, we go to them. Yes. And the person who appreciates that faster will survive. The person who does who resists that will die. So gonna if you look at even the if you look at the, the supermarkets, they are, they are already on that. They, like if you if you go to, like I'll give an example of neighbors. They, a, they tell you if you, you choose what you want, if it's over a thousand shillings, we'll deliver to you free because they have a they have a partnership. I think with Sandy and 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 Safe Border. So you can see. Even if you look at the f uh, how most business will look like in the future, we look very different from what they look now, and how business will be done. Yes, because if we if we don't if we don't look if we don't look at what we are evaluate our business model, keep evaluating it and internally, and also look at how our client is changing, and I don't think the client has ever changed this drastically this fast in a very long time. Yes. That's why, that's why businesses have been able to keep up with their clients. And they've been able, been able even to influence their clients how they behave based on how they, 
they distracted their product. Pretty much. But now the client is completely calling the shots. Abraham, I beg that we move into the next and last issue this morning. Now, the insurance sector is experiencing a rise in policy cancellations and withdrawals by customers pushed to the wall by the adverse effects of the coronavirus pandemic, a factor that is now feared as a potential exposure agent to liquidity challenges in the sector. Now, sector players are already reporting that many policyholders are struggling to sustain payment of premiums while others are opting to use their contribution as a collateral for the loans as part of a race for survival. Now, the sector last year hit a 14% jump in the total value of surrenders and withdrawals to 9.24 billion from 8.11 billion the previous year, long before the coronavirus pandemic. In Kenya, most of the insurance products are targeted at salaried people, heading that meaning that the COVID-19 job losses that wiped off 1.7 million jobs of the economy will be felt heavily in the sector. Okay, let's look at what the trend uh, for all withdrawals and surrenders has been in that sector. Richie, that's the point that you give us that data point. Good, we're coming back to it. Once you have it, fantastic. Now, Abraham, I, I want to ask you, though, if you were sitting at IRA right now yeah. and you have these numbers from um, that sector yeah. where you're being told it's bad, they are withdrawing, what will, what, will you, what will you do from a regulatory perspective? Because more than ever now, they need that sort of cushion. Okay, let's first, let, let's first look at what is really happening. You see, most business, most insurance business is, is, is in two parts. There's, yes. the, there's the general side and there's the insurance side. I mean, the life, the life side. Yes. Now, on the on the general side, they, they're, they're having challenges in terms of people keeping up with their premiums. So, so that means that they're, they're facing a lot of uh, policy lapsing. Now, that in itself is not a bad thing for the insurance company. Yes. It, it's a bad thing for the person who was paying the premium. But now also, due to what is going on, um, so, so some, some of the insurances, are, 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 those risks are maturing in, in, in terms of whatever, whatever was insured for is, is, is happening more than it would have because yes. of the pandemic. Yes. And that means that their payouts are more. And you, and you know insurance is based on a pool that all of us are in a pool and only a few of us will claim. But when, when more of us claim, then, they, they, then that pool does not make money. And you go to the life side. There are a lot of products around you save for 15 years or 20 years or whatever term. If you make it to that age, we'll pay you plus bonuses and all that. If you don't make it and you die while you're at it, then we'll pay your, 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 your people. Now, because it, was a, it, it involves you putting money in, it, it, it also should allow you to take money out. And that's yes. what people are doing. Yes. Now, that is where now the, the crux of the matter is. Because the insurance companies in their model you find they, they do factor in surrender, but they not at the scale at which it is happening. Because now that person who we, we saw registering a company, if they remember that they had a policy somewhere, the they following day is, they'll it? sit there and yes. tell them, yeah, we, they'll tell him, okay, for surrender, you, you lose twenty percent. They don't care. Liquidity over profitability. You know, you want your money now. Yes. It doesn't matter how much I'm losing. Yes. But I want some of it. Whatever is left, give it to me now. So, so with that. The, the, they're also going to lose money. Now, in terms of general sustainability of the insurance industry, what it actually means is that, and, and, and I think IRA had, had been pushing this for a long time, is for her to have insurance companies have a higher threshold for capital. Because now it will boil down to capital. Yes. Those who are thinner will go. Because, because what will happen is the, the claims, the, those pools, most of them will make losses. Yes. If they make losses, they, they eat into your capital. If your capital is thin, then off you go. But, uh, but on a, because for, for this, there is no cure. The only cure is that the economy goes back to where it was. Yes. There is no other cure, yes. unfortunately. Interesting that you should be talking about capital adequacy, Abraham, because yeah. they just relaxed it the other day as well and gave the insurance company six months to actually, um, I would say, factor that in as well. Are we likely to see mergers and acquisitions? Because we do know next year as well, FRS 16 is coming for them as well. That also looks at addressing properly your capital adequacy uh, limits. Are we going to see what we've seen in the banking sector? I think they are. They extended that um, the, 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 the time limit for, for compliance. Yes. Out of necessity. Because it was obvious nobody was, the people who are who had not met, who are not going to meet, yes. not in these conditions. Yes. So they, they had to do what they had, because otherwise everybody would have been in Those people 
who, who are below would have, would have been in breach. So they did not do it because they thought that it was the best thing to do, because it, it, it had to be done, because the, the, the contra was worse. But yes, it, it now brings to, to focus that what IRA was saying all along was right. We should have done this earlier. Because now, the ones who are not properly capitalized are on, are on a very, very, very thin line. I see. They could stay, they could go. But now, nothing much IRA can do. Nothing much you and I can do. Because people, if I have a policy that has, if, if I have 100,000 or if I have a million shillings with Britam and I have three years to go, I'll go and tell them surrender. They'll say, okay, for, for, if you have three years to go, the surrender, you'll get 90%. I say, let me I'll give it to me tomorrow. But now, Britam had probably used that money to invest in other, because they, they had done their projections. Yes. Based on, so they will also have to go and withdraw it from wherever they had put it. So the, the, the effect of all that is that People are pulling liquidity from all, all sources and sometimes bringing down some businesses while they are at it. So I'm telling you, this, and, and, and one of the negative effects of this, of, of this pandemic is the psychology. And that's what we need to address. Because if we can just address the psychology, tell people, you know what, as much as this is going on, we are safer than we think. Yes. If people just felt a bit more safer, they would withhold and start investing, at least in the midterm. People now are just doing short-term investments things that will make sure that I see tomorrow. And those things mean that I pull out of, because even if you go to the property market, the, the, the prices are crazy. Yes. Because people are saying, you know what, I don't know about 10 years from now. I don't know whether I'll make it to 10 years. I don't know whether I'll make it in one year. So sell it my house or whatever it's worth. Give me the money. Let me survive today. Pretty much. Yeah. All right, Abraham, but I want to ask you this, and we only have two minutes now for mm -hmm. just to walk out of the studio this yeah, morning. Yeah. It's fine now, therefore, uh, the situation that most of these insurance companies find themselves in. But if you look at that data, it's not like this with the draws and, and surrenders have not been happening. Because if we go back to 2015, that's when we actually start to see that rise. 2016, 2017, all the way to where right now, 2019, which pretty much shows you they have been struggling with this issue. And 2019 looked to have been, to been the worst year for them because that's when we started talking about the worst economy um, um, state in the country. My question is this, are we going to see a lower insurance penetration level more than what we have right now? We, you see, the, why are we had a, you see that, that issue has never even been addressed. Yes. Why is our, is our insurance penetration so, so low? Yes. I, I don't think it will go higher or lower. It probably might stay where it is. But if you look at those, uh, th th those numbers for surrenders, you see they started around 2016. You see, we want to blame COVID for everything. But our economy, we were already going through our own challenges. Okay. And that is a clear ind indicator. When people start pulling money out, it means whatever they are doing is not working. Because they had put that money there because they could afford to not use it and put it for a rainy day. For them, the rainy day came early. And it came early, so they pulled out their money out. So the surrenders, yes, every insurance company has a surrender model, but not at the scale at which it is happening now. In, every, in, in any business, you factor things within normalcy. Where we are in, nobody has ever factored anything that is going on right now. Yes, yes. pretty much. All right, that's exactly where we come from this morning in terms of your economic review. 2146 as your SMS line at Metropole TVKE across all your social media platforms. We take a short break once we come back. Such a trend this morning. <laughs>